the HERX exercise is conducted by uh, CNIC, which is Commander Navy Installations Command, um, in partnership with Commander Navy Region Southeast, which is our region. Um, it's an opportunity to prepare for hurricanes uh, in the Atlantic and in the Gulf, and uh, walk through the different um, tropical cyclones of readiness um, in the event that a hurricane is going to come uh, and have an impact on any of our installations. The exercise is activated at the CNIC level. Region will direct um, the different course um, depending on where the hurricane is simulated to be uh, impacting. Each installation will have a um, directive of what core to set based on that. Um, and at that time, the installation will work through their emergency management plan of how to prepare for disaster uh, related to weather. Tropical cyclone of readiness. Uh, we, we have five core levels. We are here in Panama City always in core level five um, at hurricane season, which starts June 1st and ends November 30th. Um, we officially announced that we are active core five, which means that we would, are on the alert and ready to make transitions to uh, higher cores um, when directed. So core four is um, an, a, a readiness posture that at 96 hours prior to landfall, we will take certain actions to prepare for a hurricane that might be coming into our vicinity. Um, and that doesn't have to be a direct hit. That can be having destructive winds that would impact the in installation within 96 hours. Core three, uh, we're looking at 72 hours. Core two, we're looking at 48 hours. And core one, 12, where it's currently happening. So. Um, those are all time-based, and that's based on the speed of, of advance of the um, tropical cyclone um, and its um, time to landfall. Here at NSA Panama City, we work with our 13 tenant commands, um, covering areas of um, ships' movements, getting ships underway, specifically uh, um, our large vessels, um, mooring for hurricane uh, in hur hurricane moor here in the bayou. Um, Looking at essential personnel, if we have to re, um, evacuate personnel, pers we will identify people that need to stay here um, until we completely evacuate, if that were to be a, a need. And then um, also looking at recovery in the event that we do have a hurricane and we need to look at what actions and what resources we need to identify to restore the installation after a hurricane. It's a two-week evolution. It starts May 3rd and ends May 14th. The first week is an administration, administrative review of the exercise that will play out in week two. In the event of a hurricane, somebody might be evacuated, and when they come back, their home's completely gone. Um, providing that kind of counseling in the recovery process is what our EFAC really looks at. We are currently in the process of working on establishing our virtual EOC, um, allowing people to work remotely, whether that be at their house, their apartment, in a workspace somewhere else here on the installation, um, and having that function more um, in a way that, with the environment of COVID, that we don't have to bring everybody to one location and possibly create some type of exposure event and contaminate our whole EOC team. Our relationships with both fire, um, security, the Bay County EOC, Bay County Department of Health are all essential because those are resources that not just NSA as an operational function, but as a family support fun function, we need to have those communications and relations built. A family that might be in a floodplain might need to evacuate knowing where our shelters are and knowing that, hey, we, are, we don't have the permission to evacuate and fund them to leave the area, but we can move them to a shelter, help them get a location at a local shelter uh, until a order to evacuate by the Navy is issued. Our relationship as the EOC, um, the EM has to have built a relationship with other EOCs because we might need to evacuate if Bay County were to get hit really bad. We got lucky last time and we were able to stay at Bay County. But if another hurricane hit and it was worse or the path was different, 
Uh, we might need to go to Gulfport. We might need to go to Meridian or go to another EOC as a support center until we can come back. Um, and having a good relationship with some of these nearby installations um, is a key tool because not only as a relocation, but as a need for other support. One of the resources that we definitely needed during Michael was uh, CVs. Gulfport sent all their CVs over here to help us with clearing the base and getting the base safe to re-enter for employees to start going back and helping get programs back up and running. So those kind of things, those relations that relationships we build with other installations are important and the same is for them to have a relationship with us. So the CBs are our construction battalion. Um, they are most often not noted for their work in um, like setting or restoring places uh, where like tsunami, tsunamis hit or where um, hurricanes or re resetting or establishing camps in um, other countries where we need to get resources to. Um, they're really important after hurricane because they can bring water, they can bring power, they um, tree, tree branch or other type of removals that need to be done. They have heavy lifting equipment that can help with that. CBs are an asset that we would reach out for and request for request their support to help us clear our basin um, any you know large trees like this base back before 2018 was covered in trees and we had a beautiful greenery here and then Michael hit and a lot of those trees have been taken down uh, and it's even here in the last year we've had a lot of tree removal but the initial tree removal that makes um, access through the different roads that get you to different parts of the base are essential and getting those cleared as soon as possible are what allows us to restore our operations.